Welcome to the final episode for this year of our Alexa European Marketing Flash Briefing. What? Where is that? Happy Christmas, Anna. We've a little surprise for everyone with this episode. (laughs) Well, I can see that. Hello there, Anna. Have a cookie? It's one of my Christmas favorites, a Speculatius from the Netherlands. I would love a cookie right now, thanks. Here, Anna. My mother sends this Lebkuchen from Germany since it is Advent. By the way, Paul, Carrie will be right back. She's organizing the music with Peter in the sound booth. We have holiday cars from all around Europe. Nice. I knew it was a good idea to have an intern from Munich. For the record, that opening carol was from England. Good ear, George. Yes, Anna, this is a special holiday edition for our faithful listeners. It just so happens that we are also celebrating our second anniversary with Alexa and this podcast. I remember the first episode as if it were just yesterday. So what have you prepared for our friends around the world? The idea is quite simple. After a really tough year, we'd like to give everyone listening extra support and encouragement. A glimmer of hope for the year ahead. Leslie will quickly sum up the current situation, followed by Carrie, who will share inspiring thoughts from other leaders. I'll share how our counterparts are dealing with the current challenges in an innovative way. And I hope everyone will keep listening until the very end. I'd like to leave us with some reflections for 2021 as well. I cannot wait to open this present. I'm ready too. Right after a brief message, Peter will put on the next carol, this time from France. The following content is brought to you by Derby Hotels Collection, European luxury hotels. Enjoy a special 10% discount in London, Barcelona and Madrid with the code BVAlexa at DerbyHotels.com. So, Leslie, as our numbers gal, as you always say, uh, first, tell us where it hurts. I'd like to begin by saying that every one of you listening deserves the utmost respect, as many are fighting for their companies. And we're right by your side. I agree 100%. So, how do we continue to be affected by the COVID crisis here in Europe? As you know, I shared about plummeting GDP numbers at the end of Q2. You can listen to that in episode 10. The summer led to an upswing in optimism. However, that was short-lived, as we faced further lockdowns and restrictions this fall. The Financial Times in the UK had a well-written piece in mid-October. They reported that closures of hotels, bars, and restaurants have been seriously undermining consumer confidence, and that the restrictions on movement within the EU were impeding German exports, which amount to 30% of the trade outside of the Union. Supply chains are a major issue. Exactly. And of course, this affects us all on a personal level. For example, half of over 2,200 SME companies interviewed in five European countries worry about not even being in business by this time next year. That must be causing tremendous problems for so many people and families. It is. In the UK alone, the Office of National Statistics reported in August that 19.2% of adults in Britain were experiencing depression as a result of lockdowns. That's double the figure of 2019. Many of us listening might be saying, yep, I'm one of them. And it's even harder when you have the responsibility of an entire company and team on your shoulders. Thank you, Leslie. It's important to know where we are in order to move forward. Peter tells me that uh, the next song is a bit jazzier to help us to do just that. Hi, 
Hi, Carrie. As that music suggests, from this point on, it's all about inspiring our listeners as well as ourselves. What have you come up with? Well, when times are hard, I look to people I deeply admire. For instance, these words from Nelson Mandela, it always seems impossible until it's done. Given his story, his courage, will to live, and willingness to forgive, those words truly move me. Hmm, yes. Who else inspires you? It's quite a short quote, actually. And some people might not find it very empathetic. But I like how Jeff Bezos talks about facing problems. In his own words, complaining is not a strategy. Ouch. Straight to the point. Yet, he is right. A strategy is essential. And better still, agreed upon and implemented as a team. Now, for the leaders many of us are, a strategy requires a vision, does it not? That can be the toughest part. I feel that comes from within and without. First, a conviction inside that strengthens and guides one forward, combined with the passion of doing what one loves and excels at. I remember you once quoted one of my favorite uh, British writers, C.S. Lewis. He spoke of this. Let me think. I've got it. There are far, far better things ahead than any we leave behind. This is truly visionary perseverance. Mm, a sublime melody, George. American? No, actually... Ukrainian. I was surprised too. I'm pleased to share some practical tips for our listeners. I only wish I'd more time. There is truly valuable information here, so I've put it up on our blog, in the post related to this episode, number 13, season 2, at blog.bevirtual.com. You are always very diligent about that, thank you. What is the most important advice we might offer? Self-care is by far the most important. Could you please define that for everyone? Gladly. As leaders, we know that everyone is depending on us. Yet, often we feel guilty about investing time in ourselves. However, if you are the column supporting so many others, you must ensure that you stay strong. Here I mean the basics. Proper sleep, diet, exercise. And social interaction. Beware of isolation. George, I've never heard you speak in such human terms before. I think it's common sense. I wish to excel like many of our friends listening right now. Yet, I also need to have the discipline to attain my goals or navigate crises such as this one. What are some very pragmatic things you might suggest? A key habit of those who carry this much responsibility is that of getting up early. And I do mean early at 5 a.m. In fact, there's a well-known book called The 5 A.M. Club. The calm before the storm? To listen, plan, reflect? I think of it in very digital terms. Recharging your battery, regrouping, letting the brain bring up something it was working on during sleep. It seems to me that many of us in the West have big problems with silence and with being alone. Regarding risk, Warren Buffett has said, never test the depth of a river with both feet. I think this quiet, personal time can be an important safeguard. Yes. Time to plan exactly how you will cross that river, instead of running frantically into it, driven by fear. Paul, if there's time, I'd like to mention some very practical strategies from McKinsey for CEOs. And I truly recommend the article, it's excellent. Yes, please share the key ideas with us, George. I think these five points are perfect for closing this segment. First, build a network of teams, experts in their areas and to whom you can delegate. Second, practice deliberate calm, tempered with what they call bounded optimism. I like that. There are always many types of people in any team. However, I do think a leader's well-prepared calm, as they say it here, is sought by all. And a positive vision, yet one that recognizes what everyone is dealing with. We are all so performance-driven, I think we often forget very human fears and needs. 
Well said Carrie. McKinsey recommends being very decisive, by pausing to assess, anticipate, and act. Yet also being sensitive to human tragedies occurring this year. With empathy. Their fifth and final advice is to communicate transparently and frequently. It's said that attitude is the difference between an ordeal and an adventure. I do hope our practical ideas here will make a big difference for everyone. So as we wrap up, uh, I just want to say a few personal things to you. I want you to know that uh, I and our entire team are very grateful uh, to all of you, each one of you, who has been listening to this podcast the last two years. And um, even if it's the first time, you know, we're sincerely glad you're here. And we really hope that what we've been sharing, you know, like uh, from our team to your team, from our hearts to your heart um, is useful and is something that will really encourage you as we end uh, 2020. Um, and you know, uh, I think we're all realists, we're entrepreneurs, we're business people, uh, we focus on innovation, we lead teams, so we know it is really tough and it's uh, quite possible that it's going to get much tougher in 2021, you know. But uh, I'd like to share a story with you very briefly of uh, that came from a friend of mine, Rosa Llamas, uh, who is a marketing expert here in Spain and a writer among many other talents she has. And the other day, talking about these very same things, she told me the story of uh, Isaac Newton, and she reminded me that during the Great Plague of London in the year 1665, when he left the city, kind of had his own lockdown, a rather privileged lockdown it was, but, you know, on a country estate, but he got out of the city where the the plague was, and he, uh, you know, was handicapped. It was a type of lockdown. And during that time, he had a new rhythm, he had a new routine, and the result of that was his creation of calculus and uh, further exploration, or actually innovative um, initial exploration of light and uh, gravity. And uh, that culminated in um, his discoveries about gravity. So, uh, you know, I work in advertising. I'm not a scientist, <laughs> so I'll leave it there. But um, another thing I wanted to share with you quite personally now is we've spoken about depression. We've spoken about how it can be uh, dreadfully lonely, you know, when you have all this pressure upon you. And uh, before I uh, founded Barcelona Virtual in 1995, that's now coming up on 26 years, I, I lived in Munich and worked at Microsoft GmbH uh, and in Eastern Europe. And uh, the rhythm and the pressures were quite uh, crazy sometimes. It was nonstop, very, very much like what we all uh, live and, and imagine that, uh, you know, internet <laughs> uh, barely existed and uh, there were a couple emails, but it was nothing like today, uh, 24 seven. Nevertheless, you know, the, the professional uh, demands we put on ourselves or the personal uh, expectations or definitions of success that we often have can really drive us into a hole. And uh, then if we have other obligations or perhaps mistakes we made along the way or people who failed us, it can all turn into quite a real desperate situation. I just want to really um, encourage you um, uh, kind of allow yourself self-care, as uh, George said. Uh, take a breather. Um, this is a, a dark month, but it's also a month of light uh, that has always inspired me personally. And if you allow me to get a little more personal, perhaps even a little spiritual, uh, it makes me think of the menorah of Hanukkah, uh, where the oil did not go out in a time of oppression, you know, for the Jewish people. And uh, uh, a sort of miracle happened that uh, had very much to do with light overcoming darkness. And it also uh, reminds me of the long-awaited birth of the Prince of Peace, but not in a palace, uh, not at all, in a, a very humble, dirty manger, uh, where the only people who heard about it in this forgotten province of the Roman Empire were shepherds who were the outcasts of that uh, society back then. They had fleas, they stank, they drank, <laughs> and they were the ones that saw the angels and they were some of the very first eyewitnesses to the birth of the Prince of Peace, uh, who uh, was born in uh, defeat. He was born in darkness and he died in darkness uh, until he, he rose again. And uh, so uh, I would like 
like to just leave you with um, these reflections, the thoughts about uh, Isaac Newton, innovations that change the world. Certainly there are innovations that you might be the author of that are going to change the world. And I'd like to remind us all that um, there is a light of the world in this season that we're celebrating. And uh, that light has never been overcome by the darkness. And uh, this current darkness will pass and uh, the light will still be there. So I wish you from the bottom of my heart and in the name of my team a very Merry Christmas. Bon Nadal, as we say in Catalonia, Feliz Navidad, and a very good new year ahead in all the ways that it can be good for you. Thank you.